Um, so how about technology wise? What, what are your thoughts on the latest advancement of the Bitcoin technology? Just uh, like Lightning Network, Taproot? Yeah. Do you yeah. see any more advance? Well, Lightning Network is moving at breakneck speed. Mm -hmm. um, before this event, I was at the MicroStrategy World Conference in Orlando. Oh, you were there? Yeah, and um, obviously MicroStrategy has many active Lightning projects. There were also Lightning companies presenting there. And yeah, it, it moves so fast I can't keep up with it, honestly. Again, when you have this many smart people all focused on one goal, it's miraculous how fast things move and then when you add the incentives right that right um, the more usable and accessible and easy to use this network becomes the more it increases the purchasing power of Bitcoin holders so there's a massive financial incentive for developers and other entrepreneurs in the Bitcoin space to make this thing work and to defend the network at all costs it feels like the early days of the internet again that people there's a lot of energy there's a lot of buzz there's a lot of exciting new imaginative projects mm -hmm. you know maybe one in a hundred work you know maybe we go through that again but again all the talent is here all the intellectual capital a lot of the financial capital is pouring into the bitcoin space so um i i am very excited by these developments and i think that things on the lightning network it opens up a new realm of possibility because bitcoin base layer is not it's designed to be very resilient very anti-fragile but mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have a lot of the feature set is limited because it's trying to maintain a minimal attack surface right yeah it does very few things really well and it's really hard to disturb that uh you know one block every 10 minutes 21 million coins don't change basically but you, when you get into higher order protocols like lightning the extensibility and feature set opens up a lot such that you can start building very interesting applications that may not have the full immutability or other properties of bitcoin base layer but it has enough to be very interesting right we can have um you know there's there's like social networks being built on lightning there's communication protocols there's dating apps all of Is these it streaming things. wave lake yeah streaming podcast yeah. streaming value all these value for value applications right and that seems very interesting to me like we'll get more more freedom of speech via digital mediums and you'll also get uh more symmetry between value creation and value capture right such that a, a podcaster for instance that's broadcasting they don't need to go out, I'm picking podcasting because I run a podcast, instead of going out and selling a bunch of direct sponsorships and putting them on the show, I could just put my show out there on Fountain, for instance, yeah. and people can just pay as they listen, right? It could be 10 sats a minute or whatever it may be. And uh, you get this direct monetization model that's that's much more efficient. And um, yeah, that, uh, just my imagination explodes when I start thinking about the possibilities. Do you also see BRC20 and the Ordinals NFT as a, a, an advancement in Bitcoin technology? You know, I don't have a super informed opinion on this other than any, any demand registered for Bitcoin block space is good for Bitcoin mm -hmm. because people are buying block space and using it. I don't really care what they're using it for. I don't, you know, there's a lot of Bitcoiners that want to say that's wasteful or worthless or demonize it, but I don't care why you... If, if you want to buy Bitcoin and use it, put the private key in your teeth as a grill, like, I don't, that's fine. Do yeah. whatever you want with it. I don't care. It's good for Bitcoin, though, because you're bidding up block space. So block space becomes more expensive. Well, what does that do? That pushes more development into layer two, right? There's a greater incentive now to transact on layer two rather than layer one because layer one is becoming more expensive. More development on layer two leads to more capital invested in layer two. It also leads to an expansion. Like if I'm, if I'm using Lightning Network as an analogy, it's an expansion of the transaction network, which requires funding of those channels. So you actually have to lock Bitcoin in these channels. If you're locking Bitcoin in the channels and you're taking it out of the circulating supply, you're putting upward pressure on its price. So. I'm not going to use ordinals or inscriptions. I don't care about 
BRC tokens or anything else, but it's a new unit of demand for Bitcoin block space that has this cascading effect that leads to Bitcoin number go up. So for me, yeah, all it's strange because you you can say almost everything is good for Bitcoin. It's hard to think of things that aren't good for Bitcoin. That's a good way to approach. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Last question. Um, Korea is also famous for large crypto community. Actually, I think Bitcoin community is about 10% of that size. Okay. Um, any words of advice to Korean um, listeners who are into crypto community? So you're saying of the Korean crypto community, 10% are Bitcoiners? I think so. Okay. Well, um, I love the advice that you've seen these these guys with projectors putting on the side of the European Central Bank and it's just a giant Bitcoin emblem projected on the building and it says study Bitcoin I think that's phenomenal advice like you, you don't need to buy it just study it just ask yourself what it is naturally takes you to the question that I made the namesake of my podcast which is what is money mm -hmm. like really just ask yourself the question um, go down that rabbit hole I think it's very telling it um, it allows you to see the world in in a new light and um, I think if you keep doing the work right there's a proof of work necessary to understand Bitcoin and the importance of proof of work that you'll come to see may take many hours may take uh, the pain of lost funds, gambling in crypto markets or shit coins or anything else, but at some point seems to be the trajectory for most people. They come back to Bitcoin only and the determination tends to be that this is the only truly decentralized asset in the entire crypto universe is Bitcoin. All other shit coins are Dino, which is decentralized in name only. And that is the critical distinction, right? It's that, that nobody can change Bitcoin. And that's what matters. It's the, the incorruptibility of the monetary protocol, that the rules cannot be bent, twisted, or broken, that it's a universal level playing field for, human, for humanity for the rest of time. That is the core value proposition. It's the perfection of censorship resistance or changeability through decentralization no other crypto asset has established that not even close and like people what about ethereum what about ethereum yeah right <laughs> they forked in 2016 we have ethereum and ethereum classic that's not decentralized right a small group of people changed the protocol forked it into two things that still exists now you could argue the same was done with bitcoin and bitcoin cash but I would say no. What is Bitcoin Cash today? It's Bitcoin Crash, <laughs> right? It's collapsed. It's basically worth nothing in Bitcoin terms. It was an attack on the social layer of Bitcoin. And um, if you're going to put your money in the, the thing that is most certain, then there's only one choice, and that is Bitcoin. So, um, but all these conclusions, I don't... I may sound emphatic when I say them. It's like kind of the way I talk and I've been through my own journey. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying this is gospel. Like go and ask your own questions and do your own research. And I'm confident if you take it seriously that you'll arrive at similar conclusions because again, I know a lot of Bitcoiners and they're, they're all smart in their own right. They're all from different walks of life. But we all somehow arrive at the same conclusion. So that's that's how I would look at that. Thank you, Robert. Um, where can our listeners find you on the internet? Yeah, so you can find me at whatismoneypodcast.com. Um, my largest social media platform is Twitter. You can find mm -hmm. me at breedlove22. That's B R E E D L O V E 22. Um, so, Korean politicians are reluctant to say out loud even if they support Bitcoin uh -huh. because they think it's going to make them harder to get elected. Oh, but in the US, okay. I think it's the opposite. We think it's the opposite. Uh, well, what's the difference? In the U I don't know. I guess in the U.S. we have a tradition of not trusting central governments. That's how. That's our birth story, right? Like we rebelled against the, the monarch in UK. Um, 
we also have a very healthy tradition of individual freedom and strong property rights. Yes. Bitcoin positively embodies all these things. Um, capitalism has obviously flourished here. Bitcoin is pure capitalism. Um, but that's, you know, the U.S. has changed a lot. Like that's, that's Tennessee and Texas and Florida were like that. But in California and New York, it's a different story, right? They're very, very Almost far things. left, right? Yeah. Let me steal all your shit and let's all put rainbow flags all over everything. So the U.S. has degenerated significantly, um, I would argue, as a result of central banking. But I guess that's why, but I don't know. I've, I, don't, I don't know your guys' culture. I've never been there. I'm not sure why they would stay away from Bitcoin. Korea has become much like California and New York. Mm, there you I go. think that's why. People are very, really naive. Yeah. They like to listen to what government says. They mm. want to believe. They're... Plan. Mm. Um, the self-sovereignty issue is seriously damaged in Korea. Mm. That's why. It's unfortunate. Um, yeah. And yeah, man, it's uh, people that don't value that tend to be the ones that get victimized the most, right? Because yeah. look, government's a business. They are in the business of stealing. So the cheaper of a target you are, Like the easier it is to steal your stuff, the more docile you are, you're their favorite customer. Now, if you try to steal my shit, and I live in Tennessee, and I've got trucks and guns and sats and dogs, and I'm well connected in my local community, well, it's going to be really hard and expensive to steal my shit. Of course. So maybe we'll go elsewhere, and we'll find some cheaper targets. It sounds brutal, but that's really how it works. I mean, they're trying to look for a low cost of customer acquisition. And so the trick is to become expensive to tyrannize. And it may sound dystopian, it may sound like bad, and you don't want to talk about it, and it's scary, but I mean, open a history book for God's sakes. Like, that's all human history is, is one episode like this after another. So if you want to be on the wrong side of that, by all means, ra wave your rainbow flags, live in California, and think the government's your best friend. Do, what, do whatever you like. I'm all about freedom. It's not the right choice for me. So I'm going to do what I think is right. Thank you, Robert. Yeah, thank you.